Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I wanted to explain when can we do division in modular arithmetic, which is important because we will be uh, using modular inverse in, in, in cryptographic problems, okay? Okay, so um, let's consider uh, a simple problem like this. Suppose I say um, A times uh, B is congruent to uh, C times B mod N, okay? Uh, you can assume n is greater than one. All the all the numbers are integers. You can even assume they are all greater than or equal to zero. Okay, uh, n must be greater than one. Uh, in cryptography, we often need work with positive numbers. Um, that's the reason I mentioned that. Okay, um, you can assume n is greater than one. Okay, a and b, c are all integers. Okay, so. Um, you can't divide B on both sides. Uh, I have explained that in the earlier segments. Okay. So the question is, when can you divide? What are the properties? So it turned out there's a nice relationship between B and EN that can help us whether we can do a division of B on both sides. Okay. So for that, um, I need to show you um, some more uh, motivation examples first. Suppose I take my N to be, say, uh, uh, say for example, six, okay? And um, A to be uh, two, okay? I ask a very simple question now, what number would you multiply with two to get to get uh, one in mod six? What integer would you multiply uh, with, with two? Well, of course you can say one by two, but one by two is not a part of uh, integer, right? Integers are countable numbers. So other than fractions, can you come up with a number um, you can, pause the video and think through it, and then check the answer later. So you're not pausing. You will find out that there is no answer for this problem. There doesn't exist a number that you can plug in into the box that will give you uh, two times some number is congruent to one mod six, that's not possible, okay? However, on the, on the other hand, um, you can easily find that if I ask you, what number would you multiply uh, with five to get uh, one, as the congruent uh, in mod six, you could say the answer is five, okay? Five times five is actually 25, and 25 is congruent to a one mod six. <clears throat> okay, that's the definition of congruence. Okay, so there are cases where inverse exists. This is called inverse, right? Because you're multiplying five by five to get one. Uh, for, for two, inverse doesn't exist, okay? You may think, why am I talking about inverse when I'm talking about division? They're all related, okay? by this interesting climb. Okay, let me explain this climb now. Um, the climb is as follows. You can only do modular inverse uh, if, uh, let, let's take this example, right? Or let me generalize this more clearly. Um, if GCD of um, B and DN, right? Um, if GCD of B and DN, B is a number, integer number, B, um, n is an integer number, n greater than one, right? If GCD of B and n is equal to one, then we can conclude that B inverse must exist, okay? In mod n, okay, in mod n. So this is an interesting result, okay? It can actually also go backwards. Let's assume you found an inverse of B in mod n. You can conclude that GCD with B comma n must also be one. This is, this is the most, um, useful result um, in terms of uh, division and, and modular inverse uh, I am aware of, okay. If GCD of B comma N is one, uh, B inverse must exist. If B inverse exists, we can conclude B and the mod N, uh, B and N have no common um, devices other than one. Okay, this is really nice result. How can we prove this? It's easy to prove. Uh, I'm going to make use of uh, another fact which is not proved um, on my video segment yet but uh, we can assume that fact is true, okay? Say, in order to prove this, I'm going to require some propositions. I'm going to say like this. Um, if uh, you are given two numbers A and B, in, uh, integers, you can assume they, they both are positive. The result is true also, even if it is not positive. Um, any number A and B, any integer number A and B can be written as a combination of, can be written as a linear combination of A and B. That's an interesting result. I mean, what it means is that you will always find the two numbers X and Y such that X times A plus Y times B is equal to uh, GCD of A comma B. Okay, A comma B or A and B are integers. X and Y are also integers, but X and Y can be 
a negative, positive, whatnot. Okay. So this this result um, is needed. Well, in order to prove this result, I can leverage this result. Okay. So remember this: given a and b, GCD of a comma b is uh, rewritten as x times a plus y times b. And in fact, you can find x and y using, for example, Euclidean algorithm. Okay. Um, which is another way to, to find the X and Y. Given A and B, you can find X and Y, we satisfy this property. Okay, now let's assume this is true. Okay, let's assume this is true. Now we can actually prove this is true. Okay, um, GCD of B comma N is one implies B inverse exists. So how do we go about the proof now? Okay, let's do this way. Let us um, clear all of the things. And uh, let's let's start with the theorem. The theorem is that if GCD of uh, B comma N is true, meaning GCD of B comma N is one, um, then B inverse exists, okay? That's that's basically the theorem. And if B inverse exists, GCD of B comma N is also one, okay? B inverse exists. Uh, people say B is invertible, okay? B is invertible, okay? The proof is actually very neat, very simple. Um, I'm going to make use of the fact that um, GCD of B comma N is one. Okay, okay. How do I do this now? Um, so, invertible or in, inverse exists. Invertible, invertible. How do we do that? Um, let's see whether uh, we can make use of the fact that GCD of B comma n is one. If GCD of B comma n is one, what it means is that we learned in that uh, previous segment uh, or previous discussion that. Uh, there are x's and there are numbers like x and y's that you can find uh, such that x comma x times b plus y times n is gcd of b comma n which is one okay this is this is coming straight from the theorem that i mentioned which i didn't prove but if this is true there are x you can find unique six and y there must be unique such that x times b plus y times n is one okay all you have to do now is take mod n on both sides. Let's take mod n on both sides. What it means now is that x times b is equal to one mod n, right? Because y times n, when you do mod n, will go away to zero because it's a multiple of n. So x times b is congruent to one mod n. Okay. That's just the definition of modular arithmetic and congruence that we talked about. Okay. All right. All I'm doing is basically taking mod n on both sides, right? And this is going to be zero when I do mod n, and I have one mod n. Okay. So what what can we say about this? It means that given b, you are able to find an x such that when you multiply, you get one. That means x is the inverse of b. So x is the inverse of b. Is the x is b inverse? That's nice. So we proved this direction. We proved this direction. Okay. What about the other direction? We can actually prove the other direction as well. Suppose B is invertible. Now let's go to the other direction. Suppose B is invertible. What it means is that you will be able to find a number C such that C times B is one. That's the meaning of invertible, right? In mod N. So what can we now say when C times B is congruent to one mod N? It means that we can rewrite it as C times B must be some constant time N plus one. That's the definition of modular arithmetic, right? Whenever we say C times B is one mod N, it means C times B is some constant K. K is an integer times N plus one. Okay, so which implies that I can rewrite it as C times B minus K times N is equal to one. Okay, minus K times N is equal to one. And now let's pay close attention to the structure of this equation and compare it against this fact that we know. We learned that um, whenever you have a linear equation like this, and you have um, a number one, number one is a first positive number, okay? Um, GCD of B comma N must be one because that's something we learned earlier. C times B minus K times N must be equal to GCD of, because GCD is the, the smallest number that can be written in this combination. And uh, why, why do you think GCD of B comma N is, is more than, why, why can't GCD of B comma N be more than one? It was more than uh, one. Uh, we have a problem because we learned that GCD is the smallest number that can be written as a linear combination of B and N. Okay, therefore, uh, GCD of B comma N must be one. Okay. 
All right, so we learned that um, we have a nice, really good formula now to help us. When can an element be invertible in modular in uh, arithmetic context? All we have to do is um, we check whether GCD of B comma N is one, then we claim B is invertible in mod N. That's, that's all, okay? That's a very important result we need in many, many cryptographic problems. All right, thank you very much for your attention.